to have the privilege of being here because Jesus is here. Some of us have traveled thousands of miles to be here. I see my sister coming from California. Amen. I see brothers here coming from Nigeria. Hallelujah. But I do believe that you are here because God wanted you to be here. Because it is a very, very special time, meeting this time, that we don't know if this will be the last of meetings that we'll ever have like this here. Or it is only the beginning <laughs> of those who would flee to be here. <laughs> but we do know that something is in the atmosphere something deadly, something godly, because, hallelujah, the, the glory of it is that the Bible said at midnight, mm, come on now, we are afraid of midnight, but he said at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom comes. At midnight. So it will not only be the sufferers that will be crying, but the angels of God will be crying. They will be crying two different things. One would be crying, Whoa, whoa is me. The other will be crying, Hallelujah. Behold, the bridegroom comes. So when we talk about midnight brethren and we talk about the great distresses that are coming upon the land some people say oh brother Dussel he preaches nothing but destruction they're going to cut our heads off bless the Lord God if they could cut it off now for it would mean to be that it is midnight and that in three and a half days time I'll be standing right here, hallelujah. And no man could touch me then. So then we are developing to our perfection point. Midnight is the time of the perfection of the saints when the bridegroom will be in the bride chamber and the, 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 the bride, the door will be locked. That means nobody else is going to come into that class, that bride class. Don't you understand that God said he will have a people through which he will reproduce a new world and he calls them the bride. And these people will come forth at midnight. Now, the world is trampling on the verge of midnight. Yesterday, I was shocked when I got up to see the news that they had just killed um, Bhutto in, in, in um, Pakistan. And do you know what that is? The, 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 the uh, terrorists and those who would love to destroy us, destroy our world, they believe that they can take over that atomic energy um, atom bombs inside of Pakistan. Amen. And it might will really happen, but that doesn't faze us because God said that at midnight man would be raging, but at midnight God would be raging also. Amen. So it, 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 it's no, let us not, let us not be depressed. Let us not be worried about what is coming to pass upon the earth because God is the in charge 
He is in charge. He made the thing what it is. He is, he has planned the thing to be what it is, that sin might be judged that, and that sin might be eradicated. You see, don't you understand, brethren? If sin is judged and it is not eradicated, it will come back. But if it is eradicated, it is gone forever. And this is what God is working on. That is producing a people who will stand and who will overthrow and who will police righteousness forever and ever. No more sinners will come forth. No more devils, no more demons. We lock them all up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, this is just an introduction to the word. Amen. I, I, you see, because when I get into details, I don't want people to be trembling. I want them to be rejoicing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, turn with me. I'm going back on all scriptures that I've worn out in my Bible. So don't believe it's anything brand new except for the spirit that is coming. The, the, the newness of spirit that has taken me and bless God Almighty I feel like I could leap like a heart and jump Amen! Amen! Ah, glory to God! Amen! Thank you Jesus! Hallelujah! Turn with me 11th chapter of Zechariah Amen! Amen! And there is a dimension that God has shown me that it's fearful, it's terrible, but we have to face it. Look with me at um, verse 16, 11th chapter of Zechariah, verse 16. Now I want you to know that this prophet Zechariah is a man who prophesied of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He prophesied that Jesus would come and that Jesus would feed the flock. Hallelujah. So this man who prophesied about the coming of Jesus in the same prophecy, he is telling us of something that will also come after Jesus. And he said, for lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is a broken, nor feed that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear it with the claw in pieces. A flesh eating shepherd. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> To the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock, um, the flock, the sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. He is not going to see straight. Amen. He's not going to see straight. Now, this prophecy came 470 years, 487 years before Jesus Christ. You hear me? So we, we have to believe it because we have seen the greater part of it fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. So that's why this prophecy here is proved to itself that it is true. Right? Because it has begun to come to pass. And it has come to pass to our time, that is the end of time. Now, this idle shepherd, who, who Zechariah called an idle shepherd, is because idol is a thing that is worship. Amen? Idol is a thing that is worship. Therefore, he is saying that something is going to come into the, the body, the world, the church, 
that is worship outside of Jesus Christ like men worship idols. Now this happens upon two dimensions. Amen. Upon two dimensions. It happens upon the natural. And it happens in the spiritual. Now you know that anything you see in the natural, it is a manifestation of something that exists in the spiritual. Now these are basic spiritual laws that you must learn. If you see something happening in the natural to you, know that there's a spirit behind it. Don't struggle with the natural. Don't struggle with the natural. Leave the natural. Turn to the spirit. Slap him. And when you hit the spirit, the natural will conform. It is a principle, divine principle, that all Christians must understand. We are no longer ordinary Christians. We are a people at war. This is the final battle. And God has selected certain people. Huh? You are not ordinary people. You cannot expect to have ordinary lives. You cannot expect to have ordinary problems. Go on, in Jesus. No, no, you, you know, oh, poor me. Why me? You know, why did this have to happen to me? Why? Because you are part of the army of God. Hallelujah. And you must go to war. God help you if you don't have your equipment in order. Get your equipment in order. Know that when you speak, God hears. This is part of your equipment. You know, this is a problem with us Christians. Oh, God not hearing me. That nonsense. You're talking from the devil. God is hearing every word, every breath you draw. Ha! God is hearing every sigh, every cry, every joy is hearing you. I am. Hallelujah. Yes. God is hearing you. You know what's great? I didn't know what I was going to tell you. <laughs> Glory to God. You know my condition, didn't you? I've told you so many times. I wasn't a preacher, I was an, an accountant. I love accounting. And I was running my business, all right. Amen. But I wasn't satisfied with my sin life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. One thing drove me. One thing drove me to God, and that was violence. Amen. Some men have, you know, other problems, but my problem was violence. I couldn't take foolishness. I got blind mad and would do anything, and I couldn't help myself. I was sorry after words, but I couldn't help myself until God arrested me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You ever hear of a sinner being translated? By the Spirit. You ever heard of that? I'm in a fight. I knocked the man down. Stand over him to kill him. All intention is to kill him. And I said, No, God, if you if you can save, save no. I'm coming down with a blow. And by the time I get midway, the man is covering on the ground. He's a dead man, as far as I know. I find myself down the street. Something came behind me, a great power, and lifted me, lifted me, and I found myself away down the street, looking at the scene, the man is on the ground covering, people running and crying murder, and I am down the street. Nobody knew where I went, how I moved, I didn't know. The weapon drop out of my hand when the Spirit of God took me. That day, I knew that God wanted me. I had forfeited my life and 
you and say, God, I'll give it to you. Yes. Amen. Sure, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the day came when I was mad again. Can't help myself now. I said, well, I better stop me before I do any more damage. I got my gun. Hey, Amen. Something said to me, all right, take it the shot out, put it on the bed. Put the gun on the bed. And walk out in the field. And when you come back, you just slam it in and fire and kill yourself. I started the plan. I put the shot on the bed, took the gun, walk out. When I went out, I saw a lady sitting on a porch. And I remember she said she's a Christian. I went up to her, said, ma'am, are you a Christian? Yes, yes, I'm a Christian. I said, what kind of Christian are you? That you never tell any one of us who's going to hell that Jesus, I didn't know anything about Jesus, say, but you know, who, who, how to be a Christian or anything like that. I said, just keep it to yourself. And I really tore her up. <laughs> she just started to weep and tremble. And you know what God tell her to say? I challenge you. No, so somebody to challenge me and I'm a half madman already. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was something amazing. All right, what's the challenge? You go to your room and tell God that I say, <laughs> go to your room, tell God that I say that he must save you by the blood of Jesus Christ. God bless Sister Rainford. <laughs> Hallelujah. I went into my room, kneeled down before the gun, and said, Mrs. Rainford says, God, that you will save me by the blood of Jesus. If I ask you, no, I ask you. And I get up. I want to feel the same now. I feel nothing. Amen? I feel nothing. So, I said, but I don't feel anything. You know, then the Lord came to me and he said, why don't you even use the gun on the bed? It's because it is six o'clock now, and that's the time you set for your death. But a revulsion came into me. Oh, God, what a madness. I would be a fool to use that gun. <laughs> Amen. So all of a sudden, like a man wake up, I realized that something is happening to me. <laughs> you know what I, where it ended up my hopping around the room hopping around the room because I, I couldn't make much noise the men would come in and tie me up because they would believe that I'm gone over the edge see so I I began to dance in the room the quickening of the spirit was so great and Jesus stayed there from six o'clock that night and uh, till one in the morning, I said, tomorrow at four. And he came back next day at four. And then he came, I said, tomorrow at four. And my cry was to him every night, tomorrow at four. Amen. Blessed be to God. <laughs> third of August, you hear me? The third of August to, the 7th of February, next year. <laughs> he came and he taught me the Bible and he showed me the word, hallelujah. And when he baptized me with the Holy Ghost, I don't know what it is, but he baptized me with the Holy Ghost and I began to speak through, a voice was speaking through me. I know I wasn't speaking. Because I don't know Hebrew. You understand. And he spoke to me. And he said to me, whenever you want me, you just open your mouth. And I'll fill it. Brethren, I'm opening my mouth. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. He said, just open your mouth and I'll fill it. So, Mrs. Rainford called. She wants a 
a meeting now. I said, yes, we'll go to meet. We run. I give my testimony to everybody. I, I said, Lord, but I have never been in a meeting before. What am I going to do? He said, you don't do anything. Just open your mouth. So when she called me to speak, I came up and... <laughs> Believe you me, it, it was like a pantomime. <laughs> when, when I opened my mouth, somebody came in my ear and he said, tell them your testimony. So I told them the testimony, and the testimony was over. So I <laughs> opened my mouth again. <laughs> and he came back in my ear and began to tell me sentence for sentence, word for word, what I should say. And I was there saying, <laughs> hallelujah, not even paying attention to the congregation. Hallelujah. Until somebody screamed and fell to the floor and ran to the altar. Then, that was the first altar call that God made, I never made it. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you, brethren, it has been marvelous. I went to California and I, I began to preach in California. And the, the Spirit came down so powerfully that he was telling me everything to say and they were taping it, huh? They were taping it. And when I was finished, they presented me with a book we call The Pattern. It's a message that I preached for five hours <laughs> in California. That's how the pattern came about. Now what I'm saying this to you to say, that if God tells me something to tell you, it is deadly serious. I want you to hear me, hear what I'm saying because it is deadly serious. I know men have said this before and they have not performed so well. Amen. That's not my business. My business is to give you what God gives me. My business is to know that you who are here are here on a divine appointment Check your business. You had a lot of problems deciding, didn't you? <laughs> Amen. You had a lot of problems moving. One time you didn't know if you were going to make it, but you had a divine appointment with Almighty God in Jamaica at this time. For you are going to be the messengers that carry out the stuff to the others that are waiting, waiting in the darkness to be delivered. God bless you. Amen. Now, this idle shepherd is in the natural. Huh. Yes, yes, he is. And he is in the spiritual. And the spiritual is more deadly and dangerous than the natural. I am trying to tell you where the message is going. The reason is that the spiritual is inside here. I am the temple of the living God. And the idol shepherd is knocking at my door asking entrance. Yeah. Amen. And the only person who can open that door is me. My wife cannot open this door. Neither can I open her door. <laughs> Don't you understand where we are? Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Say praise God, brethren. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. And thus we prophesy to the door and we say, lift up your heads. Amen. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up. What? Everlasting doors. These doors are not everlasting. Huh? I don't see anything around here. The everlasting door is the door of your mind. Covering Jesus. Unless you give your mind to something, it cannot come in. Your mind needs to be protected so that the devil cannot come in 
no matter how much he batters the flesh, the mind must hold. Amen. Amen. We, we have one senator in the United States running for presidency. And he was a prisoner of the Vietnamese in a cage. Not cage where you can stand up. Cage where, like animals in a cage for six years. And he has a sound mind. Amen. So it is you alone that's going to control the egress <laughs> and the entrance of your mind. God bless you. Now if you turn with me, let's look at the idol shepherd a little bit because they call him by a different name over here. You turn your Bible to Matthew. Jesus Christ himself comes and he talks about the idol shepherd coming in the end of time in Matthew 24. Amen. And he is speaking about now, right now. He said in verse 15, as I tell you, this, this, these verses are well marked up, but here you're going to get a different dimension to the verse. Who, when, now God is telling us, somebody said, oh, but God says, you can't tell us when Jesus is coming. It is, it is against the rules of the Bible to know when the Lord is coming. Amen. It, it is against, the, the, you know, and they can they keep on to the same old thing, but God is telling us that he's giving us a sign so that we might know when. Huh? He said, when, amen, you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation standing, 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 ha uh ha, -huh. eh? Spoken up by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. And he said, whoso read that, let him understand. Why did he say that? <laughs> Because it is hard to understand, especially a Jew, to understand that there is another holy place beside Jerusalem. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. But Jesus came for that very purpose, to expand the word of God and the truth. And there, when it speaks of Jerusalem now, he's not talking about that little piece of land. Amen. He's talking about the occupation of the saints. Amen. Jerusalem. When he talks about Judah, he's talking about the first fruits company. Amen. When he talks about Israel, he's talking about the body of Christians all over. So you have outer court, holy place, holy of holies, Christian. Huh. Amen. And so these are the, the, the outer court of the Israel. The holy place would be Jerusalem. The holy of holies would be, 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 be uh, Judah. You see, so you, you, you get to understand scripture. You, you now are in a position to be blessed by the truth. Amen. He says here now, when ye therefore shall see. It means to say he wants you to see. But he said that the idle shepherd, one ear would be gone and one arm <laughs> would be withered. So therefore, he won't see or hear. One eye would be gone. He's a one-eyed person. And the eye that is seen through the eye of the flesh, you can see all the scientific knowledge and details but he can't see Jesus. What a madness. A man just look up in the sky and see the stars at night. Look at the earth. Look at this body. What could have made this? There's nothing that we can even conceive that could make a human cell. The one cell is above all the knowledge of the scientists. 
God never gave us the ability to conceive. I don't even think the angels know. Angels couldn't produce one human cell. Do you understand? When we worship God, we worship him as a creator above all. For you are God alone above all things. This, this God is some, it's a concept that we cannot fully conceive. You can't fully conceive God. You can only look around and see the things that he has made. And you say, my God. When, when, you, when, when you look at your finger. <laughs> yeah. Why is my finger doing this? Can anybody tell me why my finger is behaving like this? Huh? <laughs> because my tells it to behave like this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't you see the wonder of your finger? Who could make a finger? Amen. Hallelujah. Nobody. Because God alone is God. He is God. Hallelujah. You know, Pharaoh said, your God is God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That, that is God. All that you're talking about around here, them idols you're worshiping, that's nothing. But this is God. So then we see the idol shepherd or the Antichrist. Hallelujah. That his destination is where? In the temple of the living God. He would love to go in the Holy of Holies, but he can't. But God said his progress would come from the outer court into the holy place. And he would stand up. And that word stand means to say he took charge of. He's over it. My goodness. I sat down at the television two days ago. And I saw Christmas. Have you ever seen Christmas? I saw Christmas. And the world, everybody, they said, oh, we are not Catholics. We don't believe in the Roman Catholic Church. We are Protestants. <laughs> Amen. The devil just created that to fool you. <laughs> Every Protestant is a Catholic <laughs> that <laughs> obeys the Pope without knowing. Amen. Do you know that Pope Gregory said that the missionaries should capture the holidays of the, of the heathen and should convert the holiday? Huh? You know, in Jamaica, we had a, a, a men that call themselves Rastafarian. And as Rastafarians, they did not, they're not supposed to eat pork because pork is unclean. Huh? So somebody, you know, was involved with this jerk pork and just couldn't get away from the taste of that marvelous dish. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you know what he did? He baptized the pig. <laughs> Ask any Jamaican. He baptized the pig. And instead of calling it pork, he called it Arnold. Yes, sir. <laughs> and he, he ate Arnold. He didn't eat pork. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Thank you. He ate Arnold. No. Deception. You can deceive yourself anytime you want. Amen. 
<laughs> so here is the sort of thing we have. We have the Christmas, the mass of Christ, yes. ordered by the Pope, created by the Pope. Yeah. Liberius, and every Pope comes, he adds on his amount to it until we get the Christmas we have now. It must be done with lights. Right. Amen. And the lights must be various different lights. And it must be done with great feasting and singing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. You know, and well, you haven't heard anything yet until you hear that played with reggae. <laughs> When they play it with the reggae, your liver jumps. <laughs> Praise be to God. <laughs> False joy. False joy. Amen. When I see the people of God begin to praise God and you feel the energy of God in your soul, I know that's real joy. Amen. Amen. Glory. But they don't know it. They don't know it. They believe that's what you're doing, just like what they're doing. Because he, he, he's following the false shepherd, the idol shepherd, who has no right ear, yes. no right eye, no right arm. Hmm? <laughs> and he's following this idol shepherd. And they have a war of a time, Christmas, dancing, drinking, having fun. You know, because they must drink. Did you know that? Christmas, you must drink. Because it is the feast of Bacchus that they changed into the feast of Christ. No, <laughs> I was blessed. I, I, I heard a reporter ask well, a minister, uh, on the television there. He said, if Jesus should come now and see this Christmas going on, how do you think Jesus would, 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 would feel about everybody um, keeping his birthday? He said he would be abhorred. <laughs> it would be abhorring to him. It would hurt him. Yes. That is not Jesus you know, um, some years ago, there was a thing that happened in Russia. The underground church were in some basement, praising God. And all of a sudden, a great big hand appeared, like in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. And it wrote on the wall, 10 things you must observe now. One, the one that is standing by you, make sure who he is, because when you think it is Christ, it might be the Antichrist. Do you know what the word Antichrist means? I mean, the translators translated Antichrist, but you know, when we say anti-aircraft gun, it means it is against the aircraft gun to shoot down the aircraft. It is against aircraft to shoot down aircraft. Yeah. And anti, basically, in the Latin, would mean the opposite, against. But the, the, the word translated antichrist, it means not showing himself to be against Christ, but one who wants to take over the place of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read it. Let's read it described in the scripture in the second Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's look at it. it. It is described as one who wants to take the place of Christ. Not one who is coming out and said, I don't believe in Christ. No, 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 no. This Antichrist business is the one who takes the place of Christ. Now Verse 2, chapter 2. Now, now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, 
that he be not soon shaken in mind, in mind, in mind, yes. or be troubled, neither by spirit, by spirit, by spirit, or yes. amen, or by word, by word, by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except there come a rebellion in the church yes. first. And the man of sin, the idol shepherd, you understand? The same Antichrist is called man of sin here. And the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Ha. Huh. The scripture said that um, Judas was called the son of perdition. Um, did you know that Judas felt that he would take the place of Christ and lead the Jewish nation when he sold Christ? <laughs> <laughs> a stupid man like that spending three years with Jesus Christ if you spend one minute with Jesus you're supposed to feel so humble and so low down that you know that you can't take his place Amen. Amen. but Judas thought he could take Jesus' place and so he was man of sin son of perdition antichrist Amen. And so it says here, it, 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 there is going to be a rebellion. I believe that they deliberately translated it falling away because they were afraid to say that the church was going to rebel. Are you there? Yeah. Afraid to say the church was going to rebel, therefore they say falling away. No, that's a little easier. Eh? Yeah. I come along but my toe fall. I didn't deliberately lie down. <laughs> Amen. But what the Bible is teaching, if you follow the son of perdition, the, you follow the abomination of desolation, it is a rebellion, a rebellion, a rebellion. And when Daniel talked about the abomination of the desolation, ah, sure, Jesus. Papa, amen. You know what the Lord said? He said, it is in you. Amen. That's why I quickened a while ago. He said, it is in you. And I'm not pointing my finger to you because I have one pointing back to me, you see, that the, 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 the spirit of rebellion is in every man and he must overcome the spirit of rebellion before he can serve God in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 So then the son of perdition, there are all simple it is and we, did, we, we don't seem to have understood it. The Bible says your bodies are the temple of the living God. That means in your body, God wants to dwell and manifest and show forth the glory from you. So you are the what? Give me a word. God, you, God wants to show himself through you and his glory in the earth through you. That's why he has chosen a people to minister to the other people so that the people might minister. The will of Almighty God is not for people to go on ministering, minister. We are supposed to lose our position. Amen. 
I am so blessed. I can sit down there in, 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 in Florida and receive blessing from the meeting going on here or from the meeting going on in Africa or somewhere because the people of God are growing into Christ and Christ is growing into them. Jesus. He said, fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure Amen. to give you the kingdom. Amen. Loose! Don't be afraid. Don't let these dirty devils fool you. Amen. Every time a, 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 a thought of failure comes to you, it is a devil. Amen. Rebuke it. Amen. Every time a thought of weakness comes, rebuke it. Amen. For God is saying that he, but for the elect's sake, Amen. no flesh would be saved. Amen. Do you hear me? You are the saviors of this world. It is because of you why we are not yet destroyed. Yes, sir. And even, you hear me now, I, I don't want to prophesy something that I just believe and I didn't hear. You understand? There are things that I hear. And there are things that I, I believe because of what I hear. But not because I was told so. And I want to tell you everything that I am told and not what I believe. <coughs> Because I have found out that I believe some wrong things sometimes. Yes. When God sent me here, for, to, not here, America first, you know what he said to me? I want you to go to the United States with the word just, J-U-S-T, just before the destruction. <laughs> we were sure that within two years, America would be destroyed because we saw the visions of cities, cities upon cities destroyed, completely bereft of life. But we prayed. And I believe because, when I say we prayed, I mean the body of Christ prayed. I believe because of the prayers of, of the, 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 the people of God, that God has held back. And the Bible said so. He that let it will let until ek mesu genete, until out of the midst comes the Antichrist. The Antichrist is coming out of the church. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you see, the point is that many of us ha are being deceived that the voice we heard is Christ when it is not. So we have to be careful for the Antichrist would like nothing better than to speak through you. <laughs> he would like nothing better. So every wrong thought you have is a open to the Antichrist spirit. Huh? So you thought then it was only the church system that had the idols. Huh? When I look at the idols, I mean, they put up Mary as an idol. The precious mother of Jesus, they put her up as an idol. And people are born before her. Jenny Flick. <laughs> Making the sign of the cross before her. Before Jesus. Jesus become an idol instead of your savior. Don't you understand? So they, I, 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 oh man, alive. I, I, I look at, I, I look at, I was looking at channel two. Um, I have a peculiar television that when you turn it on, you go to channel two. So I have to choose the channel that I want. So when he came to channel two, I saw a girl. She was dressed right down in a flowing robe. And she came out wheeling and wheeling and wheeling. I said, Jesus. <laughs> I said, what? I said, Jesus. <laughs> And she stopped, Jesus, and she started to twist, and Jesus, and 
I'm telling you, the music started up, and some guys came out, and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I, I, I said, what? Then she said, you're my savior. <laughs> Anyhow, I found that it was a show. You know, it was a show, and they were artists, and they were playing like Negro spiritual. <laughs> But bless the Lord God, his name has become the son of the harlots. Oh yes, the name of Jesus. So, so, so you can worship Jesus as an idol. Huh? You can worship your, 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 your pictures of your men, men and children, worship them as idols. Amen. That nobody can touch that one. Every, whether he's wrong or right for you, he's right. Mm -hmm. huh? That means you have a vacancy. Hear me now, sisters and brothers. You have a vacancy in your soul that is wide open for the devil to come in. Amen. Shook. Amen. I, I, you know, 60 years preaching. I had a brother, loved the brother, loved the brother with all my heart. I mean, I look at him as one of the powerhouse that God has created. You know, among the people God will create, people with different talents. And this man has the talent of a man of power who was a powerhouse that God could express through and bless people. Hallelujah. Oh, Shuba. Oh, Jesus, holy Jesus, holy Jesus, holy Jesus. I hope he's hearing me. I was praying for him, and I went into a vision. And I saw him um, preparing for a jewel with a man who was dressed in Islamic garments. You know, Eastern, and he, um, they were going to fight sword fight. Um, you know, those um, fencing swords. But I was hurrying to get to the place, for I was rooting for him. While I was hurrying along the road, here comes a man beside me. He was also hurried, and he was dressed in um, uh, ancient uh, kind of a Eastern garments, you know, uh, how they dress the Eastern people, like Arabia, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and he was beside me, and he said, my man is going to win. But Jesus Christ whispered to me and said, brother so-and-so is going to win. Now I want you to hear this, brethren, and I want you to pray with me too for this brother. Um, just as we got to the place, this is the scene that we see. They were fencing with the sword, and the man flashed the sword, and it took off his left ear. Huh? Now remember, your left ear is your material side, your carnal side. Amen. And I, I said to him, fight. But instead of fighting, he, he dropped his sword and held on to his ear. Of course, you do that in a fight and you're finished. The man came up with his sword, put it in the sec center of his forehead, and twisted it like this. Now, in the occult, you call that the third eye. Uh, he opened his third, the third eye, just twisted the sword. And believe you me, brother, the brother began to preach Eastern doctrine. One of the doctrines that has overthrown him is that a man could marry more than one wife. And the truth is that 
he, he will do anything he believes. He believes the word of God, he will live by the word of God. But he believes that it is in the word of God that he can marry more than one life, wife because Solomon had 900, you know. But Solomon was not a son of God in the way that we are sons of God. Right. Jesus hadn't come yet, amen. And Solomon was yet a sinner. We are in a different era, a different time, or, 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 or the, what we have received, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and everything else. Poor Solomon knew nothing about these things. Hallelujah. And um, he had to withdraw from us. But you know something? God reminded me, the word of God never fails. God told me he's going to win. Amen. Brother, he's going to win. Amen. You help me pray for him. Help me pray for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So at, at the end, he's going to win. He has gone very far into this doctrine. But I praise God, he is going to win. But you see, the that we are talking about now the holy place of our holy place we are the temple of the living God look out there and see what has happened to the churches all the churches have now turned from God and are going and are now worshiping the Antichrist let me repeat it so that those who are far and near might hear that the Lord God says that all the churches have turned away from God and are now worshiping the Antichrist instead of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why they keep Christmas. That's why they keep Easter. That's why they, they, they behave, obey another spirit rather than the spirit of God. But that is for the outer court. But what about us? Are we obeying the spirit of the living God? Brethren, far and near, examine yourselves. For he who you think standing beside you, that it is Christ, it might well be the Antichrist. Amen. 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 Two weeks ago, um, a man went in to a church in Colorado Springs. Shot up, first of all, he shot up some of our brethren who were outside in their car. Amen. And then he went in and shut up the church in there. But that church is not walking with God. Our brethren that had left our group and gone into that group We give them our condolences. Amen. We give them our condolences, but they had no right there. Amen. A church that will play rock music is not a church that is hearing from God. Yeah. Rock music comes from hell. Amen. Amen. When, um, uh, what's it, hey, hop? went to Elijah hmm. and said to Elijah, prophesy, tell me something, something or the other. Elijah said to him, you have a minstrel here. Do you think that the musician came and played rock music? Come on, tell me. If he played rock music for Elijah, what do you think would have happened? Rock music comes from hell. Amen. All the rock musicians should hear me speak 
Your music is from hell. Amen. There's heavenly music. Yes. Hallelujah. There's heavenly music. Yes. When the shepherds are out in the field, they heard the angels singing. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. What did they sing, brother? Gloria. Gloria. <laughs> you, oh, no, it's not Latin you want now. You want glory to God Amen. in the highest. <laughs> Oh, God help us. I almost said Gloria in Excelsis Deo. <laughs> oh, they didn't say that. They sang in Hebrew. <laughs> Hallelujah. The glory to God in the highest. And so, if you will understand it, where we are coming from, brethren, I hope I'm not tiring you out. No. I could do that easily, you know. No way. Yes. If, 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 if you could understand what goes on in the spiritual, music is a spiritual thing. It affects you Amen. inside. If you listen to bad music, it creates in you the spirit of the musician. Amen. Let me try to say that again. Hallelujah. If you listen to wrong music, it creates the spirit that is motivating the musician into you. So that if I am singing Jesus and I said, Jesus, Jesus, and I begin to help it up. <laughs> what kind of spirit you get? You get a help spirit. <laughs> amen. So, Jesus, amen, is to be said from the heart and is to be expressed with the, the nature of God. is expressed in the singing of the word of God. Amen. amen. When I look at them, the Spirit of God said to me, what? Does it profit a man if he could gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Amen. And then I heard a dear brother who is passed on into the heavenlies begin to sing. And he was singing, um, um, if I should gain the whole world, but not the Savior. Would my gain be worth a lifelong strife? Yes, you know, it, 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 it is reality. It, it takes you in the soul of, and it, it, the Spirit of God minister life to the soul. And you said, Lord Jesus, I am yours. Yes. So we must understand what we're talking about today. We're talking about the Antichrist seeking entrance into your holy place. The Antichrist is trying to come into our holy place. Now, let me ask me to show you a, a thought here. Oh! Could he come into my house and I did not willfully, you hear the word? I did not willfully, deliberately open the door for him. How could he come in? Uh -huh. If I had a hole in the wall that was not taken care of. For I was born with many holes in the wall. Right. And my parents were, you know, we need not tell you about them, eh? You know what Africans are? Huh? My parents come from that side of the world. Amen. And I understand that they, they were brought into Calabar. And, and they were sold to Hawkins and Drake, two Englishmen that were in the slave trade business. And they brought slaves here into this island of Jamaica. 
Amen. And so you can take the man out of the country, but it is another thing to get the country out of the man. Amen. You come from Germany, brother. Your father was a German. You don't easily get rid of that father. He's in your veins. He's in your thinking. He's in your behavior. Get the German out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you hear me, brother? Get the African out. Because the sons of God will neither be Germans nor Africans nor Europeans of any kind or anything else but Jesus. Hallelujah. Sons of God. Amen. Amen. I heard you were singing, Arise. Yes, Jesus. yes, sir. We are in danger. And I tell you why. When the I, when, the, when the forces of darkness begin to rage, if you don't have oil in that lamp, you are a goner. <laughs> you hear me? You are in trouble. The oil in the lamp is the spirit of God in the heart and soul that will produce light under pr pressure. When pressure take you, light gets brighter. Amen. When pressure take the foolish virgins, they went out into the darkness. Amen. And they wanted to receive oil. But God Almighty said that a lot of things are going to happen very soon, very soon. Now, when God told me 2008, it was many years ago, about seven years, huh? About seven years ago. 2008 was far away. Nobody paid much attention. But before I get back home, to my house in Florida, 2008 will be here. Amen. And those who are not ready, amen, will be caught because God said it will be sudden, like a moment in the twinkling, twinkling of an eye, when you think not. Amen. So, the world is thinking, oh, we have so many years before Iran can make an atom bomb. Because when Iran makes the atom bomb, they are going to bomb Israel. And where Israel is going to bomb them. Amen. That's what we are thinking. But next year, whoever is to have the atom bomb will have it. Amen. Do you remember a scripture that said that if the fathers are not turned to the children, the heart of the fathers, and the heart of the children to the fathers, that has sent a curse upon the earth. You remember that scripture? One of the curses is that atom bomb. Do you hear me? I won't tell you the other one, but you can imagine who is going to use it. Because the men who had the atom bomb did not have the guts to use it. They are, uh, let me put that bit another way. They had the sense not to use it. Yes. Amen. Amen. They had the sense not to use it. But here comes a man who says that God appointed him to bring forth Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Now, I was asked a question. Is the next war that we are talking about, the atom war, is that Armageddon? The answer is no. So when he's talking about Armageddon, it's because he doesn't know what Armageddon is. You understand? But God is saying to his people, 
that the angel is now standing on the land on the sea huh? swearing that there should be no time left time up you know the referee comes he blows his whistle hey man game is over and this is what we need to do because if I tell you all these dreadful things and don't encourage you what to do, you're going to go away discouraged. It will be too much for you, eh? But no, no, God creates your warrior. He, he, he's telling you what to do. We are going to obey God from now on. We are going to obey the voice of God from now on. Amen. And the word of God is going to be the forefront, like the Jews used to wear a little black box right between their eyes. For every natural, there's a spiritual. <laughs> so God's spiritual is you wear that word of God. And above all, sister, you don't have to have great knowledge. You don't have to have the ability to, to, to remember everything that was preached. But if you have a clean heart, <laughs> hallelujah, if you have a pure heart, God will deliver you anytime. Amen. 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 So, then what the enemy does, the enemy tries to get your heart unclean. The enemy will come slap you. The enemy will do all kinds of things to you to make you react. And then you disturb the glory, the glory passage. <laughs> There's a passage that the glory come in, you know. You disturb the glory passage in your soul. Amen. So let's go on. Because I must continue to tell you what God is expecting of you today. From the church, the body, God is expecting you, first of all, obedience to the Spirit. Amen. But you said, I don't know when it is the Spirit of God from when it is not the Spirit of God. Amen. You know by the Spirit that is within you. Yes? He said, after these days, sister, this word is for you. God says, after these days, I will plant my law in your heart huh? and in your inward part. Yes, when the devil begins to fool around, you call upon the Holy Ghost in you and see what happens. He'll come forth like a cannon. Amen. Amen. That is the reason why we have the Holy Ghost all around us. Impossible. Destruction. Everything looks bad. Yeah. Hey Amen. You have the cure inside of you. So therefore, the spirit and the word is going to deliver us under every circumstance. Yes, sir. The spirit and the word. You don't mind what other people have to say. You don't mind any, any distressing thing that you hear. Don't mind the trouble that you are in, but the spirit and the word is going to give you the victory. Amen. Now, I mentioned the victory that we need to have over our ancestral things that are standing in the holy place. Now, these ancestral things were in the outer court, but they got so deep that they entered into our holy place. That means the mind, the mind has been taken by whatever it is. And God is saying to his people that we must get down on our knees and say, Lord God, take away my grandfather's temper from me. Amen. Amen. Yes. You couldn't be worse than I was. And I know when it went. Amen. 
And when, it, when God sent me a test, God, no man could touch me. No man could touch me in the natural. Because if, if he could beat me, I would kill him. If he could beat me, I would kill him. And that was my condition. I couldn't help myself. But God Almighty, Amen. God Almighty is saying to you, you could not do worse than me, and he delivered me. Yes. And you know the peculiar thing about God delivering you, brother? When God delivers you, he doesn't just leave you to guess, I wonder if I'm really delivered or not. He sends somebody to box you up. <laughs> oh yes, and when, when you get hit and you realize that you are not resisting like you're used to, you praise God. Amen. I remember the first time a man touched me, first time a man beat, beat into me, a, a bubble of laughter came <laughs> I just laughed. The people said, it's gone local. <laughs> a man beating you up and you're laughing. Because at first that I never feel to kill him, I couldn't get that feeling. It was gone. God had taken away the demon of violence from me. Amen. So don't be afraid of what your grandfather did to you. Amen. Hallelujah. You have the power to overcome. Amen. Yes, Jesus. You have the power to overcome. Hallelujah. And so I'm saying to you now, brethren, I'm, I'm coming down. I'm, I'm closing, but, but I, I want to make sure you get the, the thoughts. The thought is that this is the time when the Antichrist has entered into the outer court church. And he came from the outer court, now he has made a step further. He's gone into the holy place. So the Antichrist is in the minds of the people. Yes. I walk on the street, yeah. I see them. You know the new style now is that the women are naked on the top. And the whole top is naked. That's the new style. Now, you, when you go down the street, you're going to the, the, the um, even in the, the market, the supermarket or someplace like that, and you see the women, and they're all in style. Short little pieces of pants, empty belly, empty top. You know what I mean? And that is the way they're showing as much skin as they can now legally because apparently the men like to see the skin. Amen? Now, that means that the Antichrist has taken their mind. Amen. Amen. You, you go into a church, another man is preaching a rapture. He's preaching it, and they're, they're real, they're jumping. And, and, uh, a man put out a book about the rapture. And he said the rapture will come before the tribulation. They need not bother. That means the rapture came 40 years ago. <laughs> because we are at the end, the end of the tribulation. Amen. We are going for the two and a half year end and the destruction. And you know, if you think 2008 is going to be bad, you live until 2009. Because there's supposed to be famine huh? and distress of nation. Amen. Amen. And in all that, God's going to have his people. He said, darkness shall cover the land and gross darkness the people. But I shall arise upon my servants as a light upon the mountains. Amen. Amen. Don't you understand, brethren, where you are? Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Look up. Yeah. Lift up your heads. Amen. Your redemption. Draw it near. Amen. Hallelujah. And to be redeemed from this body. Tell me now. How can I get away from my body?
tell me what kind of a thing would have to happen. If the body remains in the condition that it is, then I can't get away from it. I have to give up the body. Huh? Do you know the greatest demonstration on earth that will convict the whole world of Jesus Christ? is what God wants to use you to do. Amen. Let me explain something to you. The, bread, the people were in Babylon, and King Nebuchadnezzar had them as his servants. Remember, he had seen different miracles done by Daniel and all like that. But there were three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abed Nego. <laughs> I won't go into the meaning of those names. But three, three boys who believe God. And he said, no, when you hear the sackbolt and the this and that, the music, remember now, music again. When you hear my music play, then you all must bow down before me. The boys stood up. They did not bow. He said, I'm going to give you a chance. He didn't want to kill them, you know. I, I'm going to give you a chance. Do, I'll give it again. He said, do you give us a chance? Whatever you do, we're not going to bow. Throw them into the fiery furnace. Heat the furnace seven times hotter. It was heated so hot that the men who did the heating died. The heat killed them. Ah, oh, yes. And man, come on now. Yes. My imagination now. Huh? <laughs> Two men held them, swing them. Whoops! Three men fell down bound. Tie them, you know, and swung them like how oh, you'd swing a bag and throw it and threw them into the midst of the fire. And the king said, what? Did we not throw three men bound into the fiery furnace? He said, yes, but there's a fourth man in there with them. And he, he is the son of God. Oh, who told him that? <laughs> He ever seen the Son of God before? <laughs> huh? But the revelation of God hit him. You can't see Jesus and, and don't make, not sure whether it's Jesus or not. Amen. When you see Jesus, you know it's Jesus. Amen. Amen. He confessed God. He said, from now onward, nobody worship any other God but this God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, no, if anybody worship another God, even myself, take him, throw him into the fiery furnace. <laughs> he was very impetuous, eh? Yes. But he was converted one, one minute. That's what God wants to use you to do. Hallelujah. When the fullness of Christ comes into you, they are going to be killing Christians. And going, God is going to say, all right, get yourself in there and get killed. <laughs> Would you like that, Sister Johnson? Amen. Get yourself there and get killed. Hallelujah. And according to the vision I saw, because remember now, Jesus taught me everything, and I questioned him, and he showed me the <coughs> so vision. So a long line of people going up to the guillotine. And there were some just bowed down. Ah, uh, but there were some who were rejoicing. <laughs> hey, hello there. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were calling to people across the other way, and they were praising God. Hallelujah. Amen. What did they know that the others didn't know? They knew that in order to manifest God in his fullness, they were putting on a demonstration of life over death. Amen. That 
I, being alive, a son of God, I want you to kill me. And I'm going to prove something to you. And they lop off the head, cut off the head. You know, this is the, 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 the Islam love to cut off your head. <laughs> Amen. Well, I don't say they are Islamic, but they're going to have that, at least that principle. And they're going to cut off your head. Amen. And they're going to take the bodies and put them on shore. Do you hear me? Amen. And all over the world, and the televisions, and everywhere, in the newspapers and everything, people will be seeing these dead people without heads. That's a demonstration, sir. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll give you another thought. Jesus was away from Bethlehem. He got a, new, a, 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 a message, your friend Lazarus is sick. And Jesus deliberately tarried until he was dead for four days. Amen. Are you with me? He deliberately tarried, the Bible said, until he was dead for four days. And when he got there, the, the sister said, oh Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. He said, sister, I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. She still didn't understand it. Amen. Amen. The Bible said Jesus wept. <laughs> when you, you're dealing with people and they're so dense and they're dark and you're showing them the truth and the truth is not coming through, he just wept. But guess what? When he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came shuffling. He was tied up from head to foot. People begin to back off from him. It's a ghost now. Eh? Jesus said, no, loose him. <laughs> loose him and let him go. Amen. So then, at the end, amen now, hear this now. I was going to be a greater pantomime than that, man. I'm telling you, we, 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 I'm sure dead. And show people looking at it everywhere. All those oh, friends uh, 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 crying for us. Amen. Amen. Two and a half days come. And like Lazarus. Yeah. Amen. The trump of God shone. And guess what? We got up. Search around <laughs> for your head. <laughs> Come on now, my head would have been mixed up with many other heads. <laughs> so I have to step over some of the heads to go get my head, put it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You think we should make a, 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 sh a picture, a show? Yeah. <laughs> uh, put on my head and go to the courthouse and show myself. Now, when Jesus resurrected, he didn't go home and show himself. Yeah. He, 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 he kept it a secret. Only the brethren saw him. And the scripture said, at one time, 500 saw him one time. But this time, everybody must see you. Why? Because if they are going to be saved, they have to be saved now. You have made a last effort, a last preaching of Jesus before destruction hit them. And any man who see that demonstration, investigate it, make sure it is so, and don't get saved, he's finished. He doesn't want God at all. So the greatest and final death, um, the greatest and final um, demonstration of the power of life over death will be the sons of God rising up first, the first fruits company God called, rising up first, take charge of the world, overthrow the powers that be. Did you hear me? Overthrow the powers that be 
put down all our parties. And God said, and the kingdom. Huh? Yeah? Come here, help me. And the kingdom. Amen. And dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom yes. under all heaven will be given to who? To the people yes, of the saints. Yeah of the most high God Amen. and his kingdom yes. and his dominion shall be everlasting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. We are heading into victory. And some people may call it defeat, but it is victory, brother, of life over death. The life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the life. Learn the law right. Get it into your being. The law of the life that is in Christ Jesus made me free. I am free from the law of sin and death. I look the devil in the eye and say, you can't kill me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You haven't got the power to kill me. Amen. I can prove it to you. Kill me now. <laughs> prove it to you. Kill me now. He, he, you see, the devil is so foolish that he killed Jesus. If the devil was smart, he would have gone in the opposite direction to killing Jesus. For Jesus really set it up. <laughs> Jesus said, oh, you didn't kill me. <laughs> you asked my father. He is the one responsible. <laughs> so it was set up. Amen. Because Jesus had to demonstrate the power of life over death. Amen. And if you have the same lie, you will do the same demonstration at the end of time. Amen. One scripture flashing before me. Amen. It says, from such, turn away. It's peculiar to come in with that at the end here. From such turn away. He said, in the latter days, will come, can you help me with that quotation? In latter days, come those who deny power of God. They have a form of godliness. That's what we are looking at. They have a form of godliness. Amen. But they deny the power thereof. Amen. From such turn away. Amen. God bless you, brethren. Hallelujah. God keep you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. We would like to make available to you the following books. Nuggets for the Needy, a collection of spiritual encouragement for the hungry Christian by Mavis Ducille. The Pattern reveals to us the typology of the Tabernacle of Moses into biblical instructions for our time. The Book of Revelation a three-volume set of one of the most extensive and in-depth commentaries ever written. To order, write to Sunlight Gospel Association, Post Office Box 8237, Port St. Lucie, Florida, 34985, or visit our website at slgospel.com. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything falls will disappear silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open my eyes illumine me spirit divine open my mouth and let me bear 
truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see.